little bit about what I did. People, I know on a normal basis you like to use green beans from the can or frozen green beans. I do too. I do too. But here for this recipe, what we're going to do, we use fresh green beans. Fresh green beans, they're in your produce section. Don't sleep on fresh green beans. And what we did is Thanksgiving again. You can have fresh green beans all the time though, really. All you have to do is line them up. And I'm just going to show you these two. You line them up and you just cut off the ends. And you have your fresh green beans all the time. But because it's Thanksgiving, we're going to French cut these. And so they have these cool things, these French cutters uh, for green beans that you just push the green bean through and it French cuts them coming out. Oh my goodness. But what we're going to do is we're just going to cut these on the diagonal. And that's all I've done here. Just to make them a little bit smaller and a little bit more tender. So there you have your French cut green beans. Can you see that? You have your French cut green beans. So that's what we did here. And to that, what I did was I boiled some water and I added salt to that boiling water. And then I put the green beans in there for about, I guess, a minute and a half to kind of blanch them. And then I put them into some... I shot them in ice water into a bowl and then I drained them. And so that's why you have this bright green color. And this is going to uh, show you how we're going to, I'll show you how we're going to put together this casserole in just a minute. Also, let me talk about the onions for a moment. These are just two yellow onions that I sliced on the mandolin so that we would have these just ribbons, these ribbons of onion rings. And what I'm going to do with these onion rings, baby, <laughs> I'm going to put some hot sauce on them. Well, let me do this. Let me, let me work on the soup, let it thicken, and then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to do the onions. All right, we are back. And I wanted to show you what I'm going to do to these onions that I'm going to put on top. And I, and I just want to show, you, show them to you. See how I sliced the onions on the mandolin? It took me all of less than a minute to slice these. Really, you could make these on your own. And what I'm going to do, just to give them a little bit of flavor, I'm going to put a little hot sauce on them. So I'm just going to drizzle a little hot sauce in there. And then I'm just going to toss the onions. And they don't need any other seasoning because they're going to be so much flavor and seasoning in this casserole. So we just want it so that a little bit of hot sauce really smells good will be on each onion. You see those beautiful onions? And then what I'll do is I'll just take them and I'll drop them in a little bit of flour, just plain flour. I'm not going to season this, like I said, which is unusual for me. I usually season every layer. But we're not going to season this because there's going to be enough flavor in the casserole that these can be, with that hot sauce, they can just be kind of plain. And we're going to do all of these onions. so. You'll see I coated these, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop them down in some vegetable oil and deep fry them just like that. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to finish the casserole. Alright, and we are back. And now I can show you how to completely put this casserole together from now that we have all of our elements. So you can see how our cream of mushroom soup has thickened beautifully. See all those wonderful, beautiful mushrooms and onions and celery in there? Yes, you can make it from scratch. You don't have to use the can. But I use the can too, so don't get me wrong. But again, this is Thanksgiving. I've also fried up our French fried onions. And you see we have these beautiful golden onion straws. And we just fried those. And they're resting and hanging out until we are ready for them. So what I'm going to do now is to our blanched green beans. And these are good just like this. I'm just going to add in our mushroom soup. And you see me adding it slowly because I might not need all of it. So let's just see how it does as I add a little at a time. So I'm just going to mix this in. You see how that is just mixing in with those green beans? Oh, it smells like green bean casserole. It smells wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more. This is casserole. One thing about casserole making 
is generally you want them to be liquidy when they go in the oven, and the reason is they're going to come out firmed up and congealed. So what we're going to do, you know what? I think it's going to take all of this mushroom soup. So I actually measured this out and gauged this just right. So we're going to put all of that in there. And it's delicious. I had a taste of it. It really is, is the end. So I'm just going to put this here to the side. I'm just going to continue to mix. Yes. And to this, <laughs> I'm going to put two tablespoons of my house seasoning that I mix up. And I'll tell you what's in this in the information bar below. So I'm just going to put two tablespoons of this seasoning. And then I'm just going to mix that in thoroughly. And at the same time, I'm going to dump in, how much is that? I would say half a cup of Parmesan cheese. That's something you usually don't find in green bean casserole. That's grated Parmesan Reggiano. Again, it's Thanksgiving. Go ahead and buy real cheeses. Don't ever let me hear you. Seriously, don't ever let me hear about you using Parmesan cheese from a can. Cannot stand it. Okay? So that's the inside of our green bean casserole. And here we have our buttered casserole dish. Let me move some of these things around so that I can pour this more easily. So you'll see I have two buttered casserole dishes. One for the house and one for Christina Benfield. I have, there's your baby one to take. So here I am. Look at that green bean casserole. Green beans, mushrooms, onions, celery, Parmesan cheese. So good. Into a buttered casserole. Let's see if we can get some into the baking casserole. Havarti cheese. Havarti is a really delicious soft cheese you can find on your gourmet cheese aisle. So we're just going to dot that across the top on both of these casseroles. It doesn't have to be, you know, a whole lot like a macaroni and cheese or anything, but just enough to give it that melty, sorry I'm still some from Christina's, <laughs> that melty, you know, casserole taste. And then I'm going to put these into an oven at 375 and then what I will do is I will pull those back out of the oven in about, I guess, 15 to 20 minutes and then I'm going to top them with those french fried onions that I did. I'll come back and I'll, rather, I think that's it. Um, and what I'll do is I'll take a few pictures at the end and put them at the end of the video so you can see how it came out. Thanks for watching.